Chegu Sharifah was one of those teachers who you could irritate all day and she would never shut you out. Mrs. Clark was the history teacher. She taught me how to be concise and smart and opinionated. Teachers play a very, very, very fundamental role in shaping the lives of students. When I get a good teacher, I feel motivated to do better. As a young boy, it meant a lot that a teacher actually believed in you. Chegu Saleh, he changed me. This Teacher's Day on the Red Dot is on a mission to reunite people with that special teacher who has changed their lives. We spoke to many. Four stories stood out. We'll be helping them track down their special teacher. It's Friday! It's Friday! Bertemankan Azurgo dan juga Fadli Kamsani dalam rancangan Via Cruz Music dan hiburan jalan seru. You may know me as a DJ on Mediacorp's Ria 897, where I do the evening draft time show 4 to 8 p.m. daily. Thank you, everybody. Tepukan, tepukan, tepukan. Ooh, nice, nice one. I graduated from Raffles Girls Primary School in 2006 and have not been back since. I have a lot of guilt about this and very honestly, I wouldn't be able to give you a justifiable reason as to why in this 17 years, I have not met with Cheku Sharifa, the teacher who taught me the Malay language. She was my first point of contact with the language I use every day now. She was always at the back of my mind. Even more so in the past five years, since I started radio, that's right. Semua ini dan lebih. I never thought I would be able to speak on radio in Malay. Betul sekali. I started thinking about Cikgu Sharifa a lot more because I knew where this foundation that I was building on came from. And then something happened last year, which really triggered the urgency to seek Cikgu Sharifa out to tell her in person the impact that she has left on my life. Sekarang ni, um, saya kurang pasti jika anda telah pun terlihat sebuah komen. Tapi hmm. saya terlihat sebuah komen di sini yang yeah. membuat saya rasa macam nak nangis sebenarnya. Oh, uh, ini merupakan guru saya sendiri. Oh, really? Yeah. There was this show on Surya called Cepat Tepat. It was a quiz show for primary school. So we had the winners on our show. Raffles, my school, our GPS had won and what I didn't know was that Chegu Sharifa was still teaching there and she was actually watching the stream live and she left a comment. How are you, Azura? Are you proud of our GPS? That was shocking to see her name pop up and comment. And then I said, actually, what I want to ask you is, are you proud of me? A couple of minutes later, she replied, Of course, I am very, very proud of you. I teared up. I think it was very intense for me because to know that that was how she felt about me, you know, that's crazy. Because if there was anyone that I could pinpoint who had contributed the most to what I know about the language, I would say it was Cikgu Sharifa. I'm a cute baby. <laughs> it may come as a surprise to many of you that I don't actually have any Malay blood in me. My dad is Chinese, hence the go. My mom is actually half Chinese and half Indian. Her Indian father was from Malaysia. He spoke Malay, my mom speaks a little bit of Malay too, and that's the only connection I have with the language actually. The first seven years of my life was spent abroad because my dad was a hotel general manager sent overseas to run hotels. Uh, my parents only spoke English at home and because we were overseas, I was not very exposed to the Malay language at all. I finally came back to begin primary one in Singapore. Officially, I'm supposed to be taking Mandarin in school but because my dad could not read or write in the language and my mother felt like she had better grasp of the Malay language, she would be able to help me better in school. They had me take Malay in school as a second language instead. 
So with close to zero knowledge of the Malay language, I was off to a bad start. Cikgu Sharifa taught me almost all my six years in RGPS because of how patient she was and how she always believed in me even when I did not believe I could do it. I never wanted to disappoint her and I wanted to do well for myself and for her. Music is something that has always been part of my life. I was 15 when I first conducted in a public performance. Sit down here. I don't really recall being very, very interested in music because I was forced to play the piano by my mom when I was three or four years old. Then after that, we have these music lessons in primary school. It was in a music room at St Hilda's Primary that this one teacher said this one thing to me that made me pursue a music career. Oh, wow. They have the teeth. Wow. This is definitely very different from the music room that I know because, wow, fully renovated. And then still at the school crest some more. Go forward, onward, over to the right. 30 years ago, there was this music lesson that uh, is very memorable to me. I was in primary three back then. Uh, we have to learn to play the recorder. And if you forget to bring a recorder, you have to use a communal one inside a box at the front of the classroom. Quite yucky. So that was what happened to me one day. I was the boy who forgot to bring his recorder. I had to take the recorder from the communal box. Miss Doris Lim was my music teacher and she was teaching the class the right fingerings, the breath marks. But I was just sitting at a corner because I'm being punished and just staring at the transparency, um, feeling embarrassed. After Miss Doris Lim finished teaching, she went around the classroom asking each student to play one by one. When she came to me, I actually played the whole piece from beginning to end. One shot, no mistakes. Miss Doris Lim was very surprised, so she upped her game by showing me another harder piece. And I played it without any mistakes again. It was then that Miss Lim said this to me, you know Moses, you should consider being a musician. I remember running back home to tell my parents what Miss Lim said to me. But I believe everyone can guess what typical Singaporean parents will say to that. For me, you want to learn music as a hobby, I'm all right with that. Because it looked from young, I already observed that he has a talent for music. But in my heart, I was a bit worried that a music career would not be a good career. Most of the time when I heard about artists, whether it's in the arts, drawing, music, they can barely make ends meet. If he wants to learn music, I'm confident. Because I support music, I'm very supportive. If he likes it, then go. Because I think Han Han is a great artist. 我蛮感感谢这个老师的，他能够看出这个学生的优点，只是他去走这个音乐的这条道路。I was a boy that don't speak much. No teacher actually noticed me or pay much attention to me, except for Miss Doris Lim. She's the very first teacher to plant that seed of thought that I can become a musician. That's why for everything that I've achieved today, I wish to thank her in person. 
。OK， 谢谢大家，我们今天排到这边，谢谢你们。Despite struggling with the language, I always looked forward to Malay lessons because of Cik Gusharifa. I remember for many years, my friends and I would run up to the staff room every recess time to spend time with Cik Gusharifa because that was how much we enjoyed her company. We could talk to her about anything and everything because she made us feel safe. She was always part of the conversation with us. For a child, I would say that was important because that was probably where my confidence was built as well. Hey man, what's up? What's up? What are you doing? Uh, nothing much. Just hanging out. Okay. Listen, so because Teacher's Day is around the corner, and you know how, like, we always talk about Chiku Shaifa, right? So I was thinking, what if we all record, like, a video message for her individually? I love that idea. It would be nice if we can get as many from our batch as possible. Yeah, sure. I'll get it sorted out. Okay. okay. Bye. Hey, Sherman. Yes. Yeah, I'm looking for a score. Uh, Liang Xiao uh -huh. have not. Liang Xiao. Yeah. Um. Yeah. 04 to 03. Nine. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thanks. 04 to 03. Over the years, I tried searching for Miss Dory Slim on social media, but uh, I couldn't find her. Some time back, I found out from another teacher that uh, Miss Dory Slim is no longer teaching at Saint Hilda's. from uh, on the red dot they helped to search for uh, Miss Doris Lim and they, they found some uh, news from the school saying that uh, actually uh, Miss Doris Lim has uh, already passed on <coughs> it's a bit hard to hard to believe I because she's so young, you see. I mean, back then, in 1993, she looks pretty young, around early to mid-twenties. It's really very shocking to find out um, news like this. I wish I have a chance to, uh, to say thank you to, to Miss Doris Lim. The words it will stay with me for a very, very long time. Just give a just you know. <sighs> Even though Miss Doris Lim has passed on, and I know that both of us cannot uh, reunite, I still wish to dedicate this piece called Liang Xiao to her. face is like what's happening <laughs> but I thought hug her first and then find out what happened 
I heard that you were trying to look for me. Yeah. So, um, you know that time, there were two Dorises. One was an art teacher. Right. Another one was me, the music teacher. Music teacher, yeah. yeah. The school thought that they were looking for that art teacher who had already passed on. We have lost contact. Upon further investigation, the team later found out that the real Doris Lim, who taught Moses music, is still alive and kicking. I see. Glad that it was an identity mix up because I'm not too late. Miss Doris Lim, thank you very much for being part of my life. Thank you very much for believing in me that uh, this child can actually become a very good musician. I hope that I have uh, done you proud. Even though it's just one sentence, I thank you very much for, for saying that. Thank you very much. I was very, very touched. It was a very natural remark that I made 30 years ago. I encouraged Moses to pursue music because I saw in him that he could become a good musician. But I didn't expect that he took that remark so seriously and went on to become a very accomplished musician. Deep down in my heart, I felt very, very proud of him. Well, the last time I was here, I was about this small, and I think nothing much has changed. Today's the day. I need to see Chegu Sharifa in person and tell her how much she means to me since she was the first person who taught me Malay. She doesn't know that I'm here. She doesn't know what's going on. I'm actually very nervous. I think when you've thought about someone for so long and you haven't seen them in 17 years, I don't really know what's going to happen. I don't really know how I'm going to feel. I don't know what I'm going to say. And I don't know how Chegu Sharifa is going to react either. I've been instructed to hide in the toilet while she is coming very soon with the class. This is it. Hey, we start your sequence planning. Okay, you need to synchronize the timing, okay? What else? All right, this individual work, very good. Now, your activities are okay. You have individual, you have group, you have pair work. It's good. But your crawling is not aesthetically nice. Group and individual. Because you have one group, one individual. Okay, listen up. Listen up. Your movement transition wasn't fluid. You need it to be more fluid. <gasps> Emotion at the same time, all the memories flashing back to me. All right, you may be wondering who is this pretty lady just beside me, right? Yeah. She's Azura Go. She graduated in 2006 in RGPS. Yes, I taught her Malay and I could remember very well she was memorizing idiom phrases on the bed with mummy because there's a test the next day. <laughs> Yeah, she would tell me, Chegu, I memorized all the idiom phrases for you. Oh. I don't know why I keep thinking about you. Yeah. I do too. <laughs> I do too. No, I know why. You know, I know. <laughs> They're still the same. See the same voice, the cheery person, you know, the loudness, <laughs> the laugh. Yes. Still the same. You have always been that teacher who was very approachable 
<laughs> and you are always there. You are not a teacher, you are a friend. I want to be. You saw me as a seven-year-old. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't speak Malay. Couldn't at all. No. <laughs> With a slang. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I remember that. But you did well. At the end of P6, you did fantastically well. I remember that. And now you're in the Malay scene, using Malay words to converse with the audience. It was everything that you had taught me. It was the basics of what you had taught me. You remember? I remember everything. <laughs> and I'm always like, it's not fair if she doesn't know what she's done for me, you know? I'm so touched. So I put together a little <laughs> something for you. Hi, Chikdu. <laughs> it's me, Yasmin. One of the memorable journeys I had in Raffles was you. Oh. So happy Tisha's Day to you. Oh, dear, mashallah. Hi, <laughs> Thank you so much. The video tribute is truly a priceless gift. I have never imagined that whatever I do would have such a lasting impact on anyone. But to hear it from Azura and all of the girls, there's no word can describe what I feel. But it's truly very heartwarming. Love you. Love you so. Oh, well, I mean, oh goodness. But happy as well. Thank you so much for all these words. It really made me feel that, you know, I'm doing the right thing despite all the challenges. So, thank you. You've made me the person I am today. Playing together with a teacher that you haven't seen for very long and thought you will never be able to see her again. Uh, emotions overflowing. Teacher's words are very powerful. We can build a student up or we can crush a student. Even though I didn't even plan to become a teacher at first, I'm still staying on after 30 years because I enjoy touching lives. I enjoy seeing lives being transformed. <laughs> 